Tracy Petchy. Welcome. How are you? Great. I'm yeah. excited. Yeah. Thanks All for right. having me. Great. You're welcome, Tracy. You are on deck. And this is where we begin. <laughs> <laughs> So thank you for coming in. Appreciate you taking some time out of your certainly busy schedule to be with me here today and have a great conversation. Um, for those that are just beginning to watch, Tracy, and I won't, I'm won't. i not going to go into titles. I'll leave that to you. But Tracy, you work for cars.com and particularly focused on the fuel OTT product. Is that an accurate introduction to some degree? Yes, uh, I definitely work for cars.com and the latest focus has been on our fuel OTT product. So mm -hmm. thanks for bringing that up, little plug. <laughs> uh, yes, but there's um, we have a whole uh, bucket of different solutions, so that is really just one of them. But um, yeah, I've been doing this for uh, three and a half years. Three and a half years Working with cars.com? Cars. Yes, uh-huh. Okay, well cool. For those that are non-retail automotive viewers, cars.com is one of the largest and primary, let's call it third party lead providers in the space, um, has uh, been involved in retail automotive business for a long period of time. Mm -hmm. um, in fact, uh, I don't even know when the beginning is, but over the course of time, cars.com has significantly invested in technology to help dealers around the country sell cars, which is what we're all in the business of doing, right? That's right. That's right. So, how are you? How's Exciting business times. right now? <laughs> These are interesting times. So let's just let's jump in right there. How is business from your so, perspective? I mean, as far as as we go as a company, I mean, things have been really great, and that's just because you know we've been very forward thinking as far as getting a solution out there, quick to turn it around. Um, you know, luckily we are a digital company, right? Mm -hmm. And the way that COVID and everything sort of shifted down that road. It was just a natural partnership with our dealers. And, you know, we're really just trying to come up with good solutions and be there for them and really be a partnership, you know, with everything going on. And I have to say, I was super, like, amazed at how the dealerships, like, turned on a dime and got this stuff up and running as far as being digital, virtual um, mm -hmm. appointments, getting cars delivered, like all these types of things. And then we finally get out of that, right? And then here comes the other little fun hit, which has been the chip shortage right. and all these other, it has been challenging times at least. It has, I mean, we're now, let's see. Okay, so if I think of time today, what's today, June 22nd, mm -hmm. right? So let's see, June. Uh, May, April, look, I got a count on my hands. That's, yeah. how, that's how smart I am. Okay, but 15, essentially 15 months ago is, is really when COVID hit and all of us immediately went into action to, you know, get employees working from home, change the way we operate our business model. And you're right, um, you know, our retail automotive dealer partners and clients responded quickly, right? Quickly, quickly, quickly. And I think that that's a real testament to the business. And we, it, this, our industry has been challenged so many times by either economic downturns, or in this case, COVID, or now we're dealing with this chip shortage, which is resulting in significantly reduced um, production, leading to no inventory, right? Like right. we're at a time right now where literally we've come out of COVID, <clears throat> dealers have adjusted, we've all adjusted our businesses, dealers, is, dealers, dealers, is, dealers have succeeded through that time, record profitability and now here we are we're through relatively through covid and there's no cars to be sold and it's interesting because though for those that don't know cars.com one of your largest product offerings to dealers is a vdp driver for lack of better terminology being able for dealers to publish their inventory online with cars.com to generate traffic into the into the business so i'm being a little long-winded here but to get back to the point of the innovation mm -hmm. for you guys to have been in the position over the last year and a half almost two years really to to enter into and develop the fuel product which is a an online video based um, traffic driver for dealers that is built on your customer audience it's, right. it's a huge it's a huge thing for you guys to have had you not had that I would be willing to bet might be a little bit more tricky right now. Mm, for sure. Uh, no, and you're right. And it, it is also interesting as well that when we did launch Fuel, it was right around the time of COVID, mm -hmm. exactly where everything was kind of going crazy. Um, and so, 
you know, it wasn't one of those things that people were sort of open to listening to at the time because it, it, basically everybody was just sort of scrambling. Like, what, you know, what are we doing? Are we closing our doors? Um, and huge uh, hats off to Alex Fetter, who is um, basically the head of Cars.com. And he really went out there and was trying to keep dealers essential and keep them open. So, like I said, I mean, we from the top down, we try to be as good of a partner as we possibly can. Mm-hmm. Um, and we were excited to launch Fuel, right? So this was one of the first of its kind where, um, you know, we're reaching cord cutters. We're reaching people that aren't viewing TV in the traditional way. So it's video um, targeting our cars.com audience, which that's going to be a huge trend moving forward as first party data. It's going to be so crucial. Um, You know, you've seen like the new Apple commercial with the privacy and it's just going to be really difficult to try to target people in the future. Right. Mm -hmm. Because nobody nobody wants to be followed or tagged, if you will. Um, So this was using our first party data and getting the video out. Um, in the three different platforms, which was the connected TV, the pre-roll, and social, and um, it's been really effective, and we've been super excited about it, and the clients have been very happy. And South Florida, we sell it exclusively, so South Florida has been sold out almost since the beginning, mm-hmm. um, and that's basically Port St. Lucie down to Miami. Uh, so you know, and it's been so it's been great. That part's been great. Okay. Yeah. No, actually, everything's been really great. Um, and it, like I said, it's just a matter of are we rising to the occasion? Are we being good partners? Are we coming up with different ideas to help with vehicle acquisition and to really make sure that, you know, we're optimizing the campaigns as best as possible mm-hmm. on all on all levels, right? Because at the end of the day, people still need cars, still want to buy cars, um, and you still need to get your inventory out there because now more than ever – with limited inventory, right? People are searching. They're coming from far and wide mm-hmm. now. Um, people are willing to drive out of state. Is that what you guys are seeing in the data from your side, is that people are going much further distances now? I mean, it would make sense. But. Yeah, yeah, they are. Actually, we just, um, I'll send you the link, but we did just come out with an article that was showing that that was um, absolutely more the trend. I think I want to say, I don't want to be misquoted, but maybe like 48% people, they're, they're willing, and I have personal stories left and right from people telling me that, you know, I, they're looking for this particular car, so they don't mind driving um, three states north, you know, which right. I guess makes sense. I mean, I think people are willing to definitely drive before out of county to get a good deal. I mean, that's not a big deal. But uh, yeah, right now people are willing to drive out of state. I don't think that the average consumer really un- fully understands how unique of a time this is in the business from the perspective of you know you might say okay well dealers don't have as many cars as they normally have like like no they have hardly any cars right and so this concept or this what you're saying is people are driving long and far not not even just to get a deal just to get a car exactly right i mean it's it's fascinating my wife's lease is due in a week I bought it. Well, I was going to say, what are you guys going to do? I bought it, and I'm going to sell it. Well, I, I've got an yeah. arrangement set up, and I'm going to make money on a lease termination, essentially, which right. is freaking crazy, right? I mean, because you always have mileage penalty or this, that, or the other thing. But the fact that right now, people's pre-owned vehicles, used cars, are worth more than corresponding new cars and or what that car might have been. Like, there are there are situations right now where used vehicles are retailing for more than the MSRP on what they were when they were when they were new two and three years ago, 100%. which is like it's insane, right? And people are buying them. I know. They really are. They really are. It's kind of like the house market, right, right now. It's just, you know, the, the sellers want all cash. They don't, they're, they don't even want you to bother with a, an inspection because they have so much demand. I mean, that's the thing. It's just super high demand and then with super low inventory. So what do you, you know, at least... That's the good thing, right? Mm-hmm. People are doing well. Um, but yeah, like like you said, you're kind of in that position, like, what do you do? That was a good idea, you know? Well, it, 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 I, I, you know, and in this case, I'm, I'm lucky in the sense that my, my wife and kids go home to Russia for the summer for a couple months. So we don't need that car, right? Like, so I can buy the car, <laughs> I can get rid of it, make a couple bucks on it and sit a few months, you know, sure, a couple sure. months without another car. So that's a unique situation. But then I also think, you know, 
it's 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 kind of rough for some of the people that that you know if you think of your your construction workers you know your your landscapers people who are you know your blue collar workers who maybe are doing okay financially but not great but they rely on their transportation like really to do their job yeah. and and now they're having to pay a premium for something that is without a doubt typically a massively depreciating asset it is tough it is tough and you're right because we we actually um you know, we're, we're doing some renovations on the house. We've had plenty of people in the house lately. And, you know, and young guys. And like you said, they they need their trucks, right? They need their big trucks. Yes. Um, so, and that's one of the most popular things that people are looking for, right? So that even makes it tougher. But they're all aware of what's happening. And, um, and you're right, it does make it a little bit challenging. And they just gotta kinda keep up with what they got. Or, you know, just, um, I guess you can always lease, right? Mm -hmm. Just do the quick, if you could find something, right? If, like you, if could you could find, find something, right I mean, there's plenty. It's not. I mean, I have my personal opinions. I've seen, I've seen the list of things, and in my head, I'm like, is it that bad, right? And now, that's, well, we all always amp things up to be far worse than course, they really are, right? right? It's like, so oh, like, you know, the I'm world's like, coming to an end here. Right? Like, I'm like, oh, maybe I'm not that great at math, but I'm like, is it that bad? But um, there's plenty of uh, dealers that there's plenty of uh, inventory of ones that aren't getting hit you know, mm -hmm. as bad. So, but um, there's always just gonna be those people that are on a wait list. I have a friend who's waiting for um, Raptor. You know, there's still people that want their cars. Right. They're gonna wait and they're okay with that, mm -hmm. right? So, but it, to your point about your family being off for the summer, right? I, it's just so interesting because, yeah, I have two teenagers. Everybody in our house has a car and it seems, it seems ridiculous, right? But uh, they work. Right, they work for the summer. Right, I work. My husband works, so we all kind of need our vehicles, sure. right? So, you know, that's the thing. If you if you need them, you, and something goes wrong, I mean, we're gonna we'll figure out what happens right yeah. now. So far, so good. People people <laughs> find a way, right? They find a way. I mean, that's what, what you have. What's to do. the word coming down from you know from Alex Vetter and the top management at Cars. dot com in terms of? Uh, your company's perspective on how long this is going to continue to affect business and, and when do you guys anticipate things ramping back up? Yeah, it's been, you know, it's kind of changing, right? In the beginning, it was sort of like, well, this is probably another month. And, and really what we're looking at is more feedback from the dealers. Sure. When we when I go and ask those questions, so the, I mean, they're the guys on the front end. And it, and it varies within market, right? So who... If we know that there's going to be 100,000 um, F-150s coming in, who gets those, right. right? So it just varies from every every dealer in every state. So, you know, I've had dealers tell me not till maybe next year. I've had some dealers tell me August. I've had some dealers say, what's a big deal? <laughs> right. Yeah, we're fine. <laughs> yeah. I think it's just a matter of... Um, how they run their business, how prepared they were, you know, there's a lot of things that came into factor or mm -hmm. came into play. But yeah, uh, I wish we had like the magic, you know, I think here's at a where minimum, we're gonna get, here's I what's think gonna at happen. a minimum July and August are like probably not much not a ton happened in July yeah. and August. And so I mean I've I keep telling the crew here, like, you know, we're kind of we've just begun to feel the experience of this and this is something that we're gonna be seeing happen through the summer. You know, like it's almost like we're just entering the 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 big window and typically you know July and August it's like oh it's the be it's one of the best times in the car business you know it's it's model year and clearance everybody's stocked up on inventory it's deals everybody's going crazy you know with spending money on marketing their business different story this this time right, right now yeah yeah I mean well the I mean the used market is still huge and even more amazing um, you know opportunity right now mm -hmm. so as long as you have that and it's healthy that's gonna really drive you know, the sales. And it, it's crazy because everyone's kind of thought that during COVID, if you look at the numbers like last summer, right? Everyone thought doom and gloom, but the numbers were huge then. Mm -hmm. And people were still shopping. It wasn't stopping them. They weren't even able to get out of the house. So I think it's a little different in this in this time where you know there's a will there's a way right now right so um you've got a, you've got a you've got a significant demand for mm -hmm. limited availability which is a different story than people having normal demand for normal availability and dealers really customizing their business to service clients in a way that make them feel healthy and safe right mm -hmm. it's, it's a it's a different deal yeah. right now but you know we'll get through it 
You know, we always do. And uh, the retail car business is very, um, what's the word that I'm trying to, uh, I can't think of the word. Resilient, that was the word. Oh, for sure. Resilient, right? And we always find a way. It's just it's just the hustle nature of this business of like figuring out okay, we got to make this happen. And yeah, we will. no, I agree. And like you said, I mean, really. And at the end of the day, people need need the cars. Mm-hmm. Like I'm not willing. I'm not at that point yet where, and I literally can't. I can't Uber around. I can't, you know, <laughs> use public transportation. I can't. That's not what my job does, right? <laughs> so I mean, that's the thing. How'd you get Until to the dealership? We well, I'm I'm a little late for my meeting. I'm yeah, riding the sorry. bus. <laughs> <laughs> Could you imagine? Everybody would be like, "Wait, you want to buy a car?" <laughs> right? Yeah, you'd be getting sold at every at, at every store you I went know. into. I know, and that is kind of funny because, um, you know, I have obviously you know work with a lot of dealers, and I've developed relationships over the years. So mm-hmm. when it is time for us to buy or lease or something like that, I'm always like, "Oh, who should I go to?" I, I'm not a. I mean, it really. I'm not a huge. It doesn't matter what I have. I'm just happy if it works. If it's new, it's if it's an SUV, right? right? I don't have too many other um, expectations. So anyhow, yeah, I was just trying to figure out who's my favorite this time and who should I talk to this time? Well, and you want to make sure that you're <laughs> that you're doing business with the people that do business with yeah, you. Yeah, I want to do business with everybody. Yeah, you do, right? Right, and you've got yeah. a, 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 a wide client base, so it's like, okay, well, you know, yeah, if you have three, if you have three dealers of a particular brand, then you're like, all right, who am I buying this from? Exactly, right. but the other side of it is too, my <laughs> husband is a, um, tough negotiator, if you mm-hmm. will. Okay. So, I usually just say, "Listen, you're you're saving yourself a lot of hassle. <laughs> we'll go somewhere else." <laughs> I'm so tired. He just yeah, he's uh, a grinder, huh? He is a grinder. Uh, so it's so fun though. Oh, see, not for me. It's fun to grind. I'm a big old sucker. I'm just like, what? I want you to be happy. I want to be happy. Right. Let's make this deal work. So, yeah, I thank God for him because otherwise, I'd be paying. <laughs> Probably some ridiculous thing. <laughs> so let me ask you, how did you, I don't know much about your history, where you're from, all that stuff. We can get into that as we see fit. But how did you find your way into the retail automotive business? Give us a little history of your career path. Yeah. Um, What's on your resume, Tracy? <laughs> <laughs> Please don't don't double check this. <laughs> uh, you, you know, it's it's a long resume. Um, so you know, quite honestly, I started a long time ago when I first started my career in um, on the agency side. Okay. So you know, I went to USF. I you know majored in marketing, advertising. So are you a, are you a permanent full time Florida girl? Well, no. Okay. Um, since. College, so since okay. I was about yeah nineteen or something like that. Okay, so just a so, few years ago. <laughs> of course, I love when right. people say that. <laughs> <laughs> makes me so happy. There you go. Yeah, so uh, started out. I worked at a few agencies in Tampa. Okay. Um. So saw. I mean, and back then, so this is what sucks when we talk about this stuff. So back then, we were literally like line iteming like the cars on the newspaper, sure. and it was my job to edit that. Oh, you were a liner girl. Uh huh. Well, for a brief amount of time. Okay. <laughs> brief amount of no time. No shame in that uh, game. We've <laughs> like, all been through similar versions of that. Oh wow! That I just and I was so happy because I was just happy to be at an agency, right? Right. Um. So I did work for a couple different dealers then. Saw some things. Um. So like Furman. Um, okay. Even a couple out of state. So, and then after that, just kind of hit or miss with different other clients. To, you know, different other verticals. But um, ended up in the digital space, and and that was also interesting because it was right when SEO was the biggest thing, right? Mm-hmm. And I don't know if you remember, but trying to explain to somebody about SEO, it, I mean, it was like blank faces all over. Like this isn't going to be amazing. Right. See, it costs a lot of money. Yeah, you need content. But you need there's it. rules. There's per, you know there's all these steps well, right. that you need to go but, but through, like, and it will get you ranked organically. Right. Right. Yes. So, you know, you're out there. It's so. Hate to say it, that still happens. Those okay, conversations. Right. <laughs> we've, 15 years <laughs> later, it's still like, uh, okay. No, this is SEO. Right. That's SEM. Yep. 
Yeah, I, I mean, I just try to do a Google search and just say, this, look, this is what we're talking about. Right. Um, yeah, so I was back in, uh, I was working for Cox um, at the Post, but on the digital side. Okay. So they were actually really, um, they were really innovative back then. And I, and I had all the dealerships basically from Palm Beach down to Miami selling, you know, doing the digital space with them. So display you, ads, huh? all that kind of stuff. That's so important. So, uh, I liked it. Now it was, um, you know, it, it's a little different with automotive and digital because digital, it took a little while for it to be within almost like a real time change, right? I mean, you would think you have that 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 capability, but right. um, you know, they're changing ads left and right and left and right. So it definitely was a little bit challenging. Well, when you when you say you started in digital um, for the post, you're talking about the Palm Beach Post. Is mm -hmm. that what we're talking about? Okay. And digital, the clients that you had from Palm Beach down to Miami, were they automotive clients or non-automotive? Yeah. Oh. Strictly automotive. Strictly automotive. Yeah, okay. I mean a little bit non, right. but strictly because they were the ones that were originally excited about all of it. Right, okay. You know, they're, they're what? You can get my message out in this different way and all these people are going here and it makes total sense. Mm -hmm. um, actually, Alpine Jag, that's just a right client. Oh, Dan yeah. Dan was like one of my best, uh, best clients. But um, yeah, so still involved with auto, ended up back, um, you know, different things but that's basically long story short how I got involved with cars.com just because I had more I mean I had some of the relationships um and you know they're they're a fun group of people to to work with so so I'm, I'm curious and and I hope that I explain this correctly but mm. going back however many years mm. Um, cars.com had a strong relationship in a number of newspapers right yes and now were they just Cox owned papers or because I seem to recall that like most newspapers around the country had some sort of partnership arrangement with cars.com reselling, you know, a, you know, used vehicle inventory right. listings. Right. Yeah. And then it, that moved into other things. And so there was there was this sort of, you know, this collaborative effort. Is that how it was? Yeah, because it was more like a classified ad. It was yes. basically like the classifieds moved into digital. Right. Um, they were with Tribune. So Cars.com was Tribune owned, I believe, okay. at the time. That's right. And then, you know, they finally split apart and now they're, on comp they're their own company, right. which has been fantastic, right? Because it's just sort of like, okay, now we can really run with it. Now we can really do what we want to do. We see the vision, we see the future. This is how we're going to get things done. Mm -hmm. um, and that's been super exciting to be a part of. Yeah, uh, you know, just kind of cut back away from the papers, you know, which is just a different, it's just a different way of thinking. Mm -hmm. So, I um, yeah. So you're kicking ass up and down the East Coast of Florida, <laughs> selling the hell out of digital yeah. to dealers at a time when they're still learning and trying to figure out how this all works and what it all means. Sure. I, I mean, I, I think a lot of it is just relationships and, you know, showing them different ways or, or just, you know, being an, an overall consultant. I mean, especially for me, because I have agency background, I have marketing background. I'm not just, I don't feel like I'm the salesy, here's, you know, here's what we got today. I'm right. more of like, what can we do? What, do you, what are your challenges? Collaborative. What do you need? Yeah. Partner. Yeah. That's the way. To, <clears throat> that's the way to go about doing it. You know, I mean, dealers appreciate that. Anybody appreciates that mm. to feel like that the person that they're doing business with understands their business and is there to provide a solution. You know, to help them solve certain problems that they need people to help them with. You know, that whole like feeling like you're getting sold all the time is like, ugh. It's you know, oh. and it doesn't mean that if you're in the position such as yourself or myself that you don't want to go out and sell and close sure. and right. win new business and do all that stuff, that's a huge part of it. Yeah, but definitely. The, the way to do it is through collaborative partnership. Absolutely. Yeah, so it is um, challenging, exciting, but I, I, I don't know, it's been, I like it. I don't know what else to say. What Now, okay, so that, that leads us into, what is it about the business and working in and around dealers that works for you, right? Because it's not for everybody. No, it is not. <laughs> uh, well, I mean, I always joke about, you know, there's just no way I could ever have a serious, serious job. You know, I hats off to doctors and lawyers and everybody that, you know, for me, it's, um, I like to have a good time. I feel like 
you know, I can't be so dang serious all the time. And and, and really, the, you know, dealers are running a, a business. You know, they, this, right. at the end of the day, they need to sell cars and no BS and let's get this stuff done. But, um, you know, at the same time, uh, it's just a good crowd, right? I mean, it's it, it's a little, I guess it could be a little intimidating. Like, it just makes me laugh that sometimes you just, you know, when you do walk into a dealership, obviously everybody wants to come around because they think you're a customer. Right. Um, and if not, you know, you walk in maybe where there's a big sales meeting or something going on. It can be a little intimidating. Like there's a bullpen, such a sort of situation. And sometimes you just gotta walk in and be like, hello, you know, what's, <laughs> what's happening, everybody? <laughs> and, uh, you know, you don't wanna make it like, you don't wanna look like a guy in a suit coming in with his briefcase ready to sell a bunch of stuff, right? <laughs> right. It, just, it just doesn't work. So um, I have a lot of fun with that, but at the same time, um, it's just, uh, I love marketing in general. I love consumer behavior. I love to see what ticks. Um, and with especially with what we do, mm-hmm. I mean, we can see what's happening. It's, it's not like guesswork, right? We can see that somebody's actually interested in this and why they're interested in this and how what, what's happening. So I love to be able to look at that. We have so much back end reporting. Um, I mean, you could really get lost in it all, and so I do dig that stuff. Um, where, where did that Where did that interest come from for you? You know, that sort of that that more analytical. Uh, pro- I mean, I guess just well, I think I, I look at myself and I think I'm a marketer's dream, right? Like something gets put on a commercial, and I'm like, oh yeah, I need that, or oh I like that, or wow, so I really you like respond. that. <laughs> yeah, so I thought, well, my God, you know, how hard like could this be? Or I'm always like, why are they targeting me? Like that's kind of weird. Well, what am I giving off that I'm giving back in? But yeah, I just think that that side of it is just a little interesting. So you think you, you're intrigued by the more scientific, analytical side of why? and how they reach you or with your clients, how you're reaching them and yeah. what, whether that's working or not. I do. Which is part mean, of what it's all about right now. Right, don't you think that's interesting? Yes. I, lo- I love trying to figure out where people are coming from and, and it's just because, I mean, if you honestly just stop and listen, everybody's coming from a different perspective. And really, especially in today's world, I mean, you've got to meet all those challenges, right? It's no longer just, you know, you can't just put the blinders on and say, well, this is how I do it. You know, mm-hmm. that's not, well, Nobody else does it. You know, let's take a let's take a group of thirty. I bet you wouldn't even find one person that does it the way you do it. Everybody has their own way and their own reasonings. And so, how does how, how do dealers and marketers how do they uh, uh, adjust to and accommodate that mm-hmm. if there's so much variety in the process of how each individual goes through this you know this purchase process, if right. you will. You know, wh- what do you tell a dealer who's like, well, then how the, you know how, how do I do heck? this right? How well, and to that point, it's interesting because with, with the fuel, we now can actually see the journey of somebody who has seen the video, right? So mm-hmm. we've reached this person. Um, the journey could be 100 lines long. Like this is how many different times he went, this or he or she, whoever, went here or there and decided that maybe they're looking at a Buick and end up with a Porsche. Like it just, it's so interesting to me, right? Mm-hmm. Dealers don't have time to worry about all that stuff. You know, they don't, they just, are we getting the message in front of the right person? Yes, because they're obviously a car buyer. But um, I hate to say it, but it is literally, you have to be everywhere at all times. <laughs> you do. I mean, it's it's all the timing, right? I mean, it's just a matter of hitting that person again and again and again, and today is the day. But if you're not there, then they're not thinking of you, mm-hmm. then you lose out. But they're really... I don't know, don't you agree? I mean, especially coming from what you do, I I feel like, what is it, the theory of recent saints, like you always have to be there. I think, um, I, I, I wanna say this the right way. Um, certainly, and I've said this a gazillion times to our clients over the years, right? It's about consistency. Definitely. Um, and, when I say consistent, it is that being everywhere that you can, right, right, within reason, and just showing up and putting something out there, right. So I think of I think of Grant Cardone, right. Grant Cardone, thirteen or so years ago, when the economy hit the shit in two thousand eight, that's when he went all in, and he just started cranking out content, right, just over, like just like ad nauseum. It was like it was everywhere, right. 
can you remember any one specific one? Probably not. Can you remember the general tone of what they were about? Yeah. And I'm not saying Grant, you know, you love them or hate them, but it doesn't matter. The point is, is there is this, that, that consistency, right? And I think if there's one thing that I've always preached to our dealers over the years is you got to be consistent, right? right? You can't jump from this to that, to that, to this, pull back, start again, and, and, and succeed, right? You just need to be out there, and it doesn't mean that you're going to hit a home run every time. You might just be hitting singles and doubles, and you know. And, and I'm not real big on sports analogies. As I was saying <laughs> that, I'm like, this is a, this is it's not really my wheelhouse here. But but the point is, is to what you're saying is, yes, you have to be out there, and you do have to kind of be everywhere. Not every dealer can afford to be everywhere, but if you're going to be somewhere, be thoughtful about what your what your channels are, okay. And then you just gotta you just gotta keep doing it and doing it and doing it. And the one thing that is I think scary for any business person is you know fuel. Perfect example. A lot of data, a lot of information there. Search engine marketing, a lot of data, a lot of information there. Right? Like dealers have our information overload. Right. And at the end of the day, we've all been studying all this stuff for years, and there's still this element of like, which is the thing that's really working, right? And the answer is it's not one thing, it's a recipe. And all of it working together is what's creating the results, right? And so these pieces and parts, whether it's fuel or whether it is search engine marketing or whether in some cases some people start doing some traditional or, or whatever or, or social, it's this combination of all of these with that consistent message through all of it just over and over and over that makes the impact. Right. Providing that when the customer gets to the dealership, it's a reasonably consistent and decent experience. Mm -hmm. You know, I no, you, you said it perfectly. That, that's exactly right. Um, because that's the key. You don't know who is ready when they're ready or what's going on in their life, right? The, the, how, how do we know that necessarily that you have a lease coming up in the next week, right? If everyone knew that. You'd be flooded, right? Well, I mean, you know, and you, you probably are the direct mail, yeah. you know, and the, you know the, the phone calls, but but yeah, 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 I know what you're saying. Yeah, so um, right, I know. I think I think that's really good advice as to stick with it as well, right? The consistency of it, because yeah, you you don't want to just show up here and then show up here and then show up here, and it's just that's going to be. It's it's a it's, it's a disastrous strategy, and and every client that we've had that is you know really struggled because they're they're bounced all over the place, and the ones that do the best over the time are the ones that are consistent. I'm curious um, from your perspective. You know, we live in the age in the retail automotive space where one of the big you know catchphrases and technologies is digital retailing. Okay. Mm -hmm. I know you hear a lot about this all the time. So yeah. For those that don't know, digital retailing is really just the next evolution of technology in the retail automotive space that uh, in a perfect world means that you, Tracy, are searching for your car, you find it online, you enter, you begin the transaction online and basically complete almost the entire transaction online mm -hmm. and then either take delivery of the car at your home or office or you show up to the dealership and you pick it up. And basically you never walk into the dealership other than to either get your car and that's pretty much it. Right. And that's the thing. Like there's eight gazillion companies, I couldn't name them, that all have their digital retailing tool yeah. and da 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 Long intro, short point. Most of our clients say that two to four percent of their business is actual, like fully online and car gets delivered. And that the bulk of their transactions are still regular everyday people coming into the dealership to buy a car. That's what I'm hearing. Okay. What are you guys hearing? No, I, I love hearing that actually, um, because of course, you know, we, we do also have a digital retailing product because mm -hmm. we're part of Dealer Inspire. So yes. It creates the websites. So um, that was kind of like the, that was the big thing. Maybe two years ago or something, it just seemed like that we were sort of out there. And, and again, to your point, right? Dealers are like, huh, you know, I'm not comfortable with that. Like, I, I certainly don't want to do a deal like that. Right, because it's it's, all, a, it's an adjustment process. Yeah, but I have seen it grow mm -hmm. substantially. Um, I don't, I ha, I don't actually have that the insight that like you said, but I do believe that they believe. I I mean, we've had discussions of this. People still want to come in. They still want to touch the car, right? Well, yeah, and digital retailing, it's not to say that it's not successful or not a great idea. No, totally. It's just, I, it's just one thing that gets people further into the process yes. before they ultimately show up. 
But the great thing about that is, again, it's having another solution for another type of people, another type of person. You know, I, and I don't know if that's going to be like the millennials or or now. Wait, who's who's younger than the millennials now? I forgot no, that you got you got Gen Y, and then there's actually something before that. Which as yeah. marketers, we should know that, but I don't. I can't think of it right I'm off the top of my to head. I'm trying to keep up with it, but I know there's uh, always some new. Group. Yeah, you know, it's a how do you get? I think everyone thinks that this is the way. This is the way, and. Um, you know, I've yet to meet someone that actually has purchased their car online, but I do know that there are busy people. And if this is the way that works for them, they know like, okay, literally I'm on my 10th Grand Jeep Cherokee, right? Okay. I know I want the same thing. So sure, who's got it in gray? Who's got black? Who's got that? I already know so much about it. Um, that's not me. Like, I don't know anything. <laughs> I hate to admit it, but and I laugh all the time of like, yeah, you know, my actual car knowledge, right, as to what's out there, I don't know, like, some people can just just say this, you know, make, model, like, it's right. crazy what people know. Um, me, I'm like, well, what's the new stuff look like? Is it pretty? You know what I mean? Like, I know, I'm, I'm with you on that. I mean, I, you know, I've I been around know. this business my entire life, and there's still so many times where I'm like, I have no idea what that car is or who, what, you know, I mean, I don't know every make and model. I really yeah. don't. And recently I saw some car. You? I saw, I don't even remember what it was, yeah. but it was the first time that I had seen that model in a long time, and I was like, God, when did that thing go from being really cool to really horrible? Like, right. And I was like, how many years have I not even noticed that this vehicle, which I once thought was a really cool SUV, now looks like yes. a really yes. bland, blah, something. But no, there's so, there's, there's so much out there, and um, I still think you gotta like, I don't know. For me, I don't get it. I prefer, I I like to see something. I, I really do, and I don't. And not just online. I mean, everyone's doing the research online. That mm-hmm. that's that's a hundred percent right. Yeah. Right. Um, but uh, yeah, the digital retailing space. I don't know. Everyone thinks that really is the future. Um, I don't see it. Yeah. I mean, it's going to continue to move that way, right? It will. It will continue to move that way. When when do dealerships operate 100% online and people are ordering cars just like uh, they buy stuff on Amazon? I don't know. Is it possible that that happens? Yes, of course. Who's to say what 10, 15, 20 next generations, what they want and how, how it all works? So I'm not here to say that that's not the direction. But right now, it's in our business, right? And you've mm. seen this because you've been around the business a long time. There's always this new, amazing thing that's just going to revolutionize the business, right? And everybody goes freaking nuts about it, right? It's all everybody can talk about. And then you, you know, time passes, and you realize that mm, a lot of people didn't really even understand what they were talking about, like right. with this. It didn't make quite the difference that everybody thought it was going to be, and now, now it's like on so to the many. next thing. There's right? a list. I mean, honestly, one day we should we should read like the top ten things. Right, that, like, this, that, that, that would this, be funny. that, that. I mean, there's always something, but that's the thing. You know, we're all looking for that something new. And I mean, that yeah, definitely. But as far as like the consumer goes, I mean. There isn't a person that doesn't call and and already starts talking about the price. So, you know, that's the other thing about the digital retailing, how everybody wants to negotiate. I think everybody wants to negotiate. There isn't, I can't imagine, I don't know, I haven't met someone yet that's not gonna, willing to say, well, that's great, but where's my, you know, something. They want something. Yes. Right, because they have the choice right now. So, I don't know. I don't know how that'll all shake down. We'll see. Yeah, we'll see. Yeah, but that is interesting. I'm glad you brought that up because uh, I'm I'm curious to hear what people are saying. About I am that. too, and 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 I always, you know, I I always hope that these conversations yield new insights, new it new. Maybe somebody sees that and they comment on the, you know, on yeah. the thread and say, hey, you know, actually we're seeing this. I, I I'd love to learn more about yeah. what dealers are seeing. I just know the ones that I talk to are like, yeah, I mean, it's you know, it's it's a it's a piece of it, and we're working on it, but it's not as much. You know, I still hear. You know, guys, I, you know, I got to go talk to my wife. I got to go do this. Boy, exactly. is that the best you can do? You know, I mean, like, like just, you know, one of our, our shared clients, you know, his office is right on the showroom floor. And he tells me all the time, he's like, I listen to these conversations all day long. You'd think that you were 20 years ago. It's the same thing. I, you know what? Exactly. He's right. It is the same thing. I hear him too. And, and you just kind of laugh. It's so, and, and it's so interesting people. And the things they say and come up with. I mean, there's just, I've heard so many crazy things, really. And I laugh and I say, you guys, you guys are really on the front line here. I'm like, 
I got hats off to you, you know? Yeah. Because they're working hard, you know? They really are, so. It's true. Yeah, he's right about that. Things what, haven't um, changed much. What, what you know, as you were uh, growing up, mm. what are the things in your life that led you in the direction of ultimately getting a, you know, studying, I'm assuming studying, and then ultimately getting into the advertising and marketing field. What drew you into this, into this field? Yeah, I, I mean, that was mainly my dad. And basically because we, um, I mean, it was more like the art side. My dad was a huge like car guy. I mean, raced indie cars and did that kind of stuff. And really taught me how to like, you know, change a tire and change my oil, which you don't even have to do anymore, right? I wouldn't even know how to do it on one of these new cars. <laughs> right. But um, as far as like, yeah, he was artsy. I was a little artsy. Um, he was really big on, well, art's great, but you know, you gotta make money. Like, right. <laughs> uh, so he dabbled a little bit in advertising when he was younger and he talked to me about it and I was like, this sounds like, this is it. Right. You know, this makes so much sense. Like it, it just brings it all together. So that was really, um, he was really, yeah, my point of reference for that, totally. And, Interesting, uh, so did, did, I mean, did he race cars for a long period of time? I was that uh, like? Well, I don't remember it, so okay. I don't know how long that was happening, right? Mm -hmm. I know it was little, um, I know my mom didn't love it. Right. <laughs> I know he loved it. Sure. He loved it, but I think at some point my mom's like, you have two kids and we don't want you to die. You know, <laughs> that's scary. That indie car stuff. Yes. Like it's um yeah it's serious stuff. But anyhow, yeah, he was a pretty interesting guy, and uh, yeah. So his so so uh, you know because a lot you know race car drivers are pretty eccentric in a way. There's like this sort of like you know bra bravado daredevil <laughs> thing. You yeah. know, there's also sort of like uh, men of the world to some degree. Yeah. Because yeah, I've yeah. been around a number of them in my life as well same, too. My yep. dad did the same to some degree, and it, they're interesting. They're really interesting characters, right? Because yes. it's like it's a very risky, kind yeah. of egocentric thing to do. <laughs> So, so uh, you're accurate at all those statements, yes. Right. Uh, yeah. So, as a byproduct of this for him, he got into art and had an artistic side that you also mm -hmm. that also appealed to you. Yeah, uh, I mean, and and I'm grateful for him to uh, to your point. You know, definitely had a very big personality, right, and um, made it easy just to you know he just he made it easy to kind of like deal with a lot of personalities, right? Uh -huh. So, like having to just deal with his personality was a lot. So I figured if I can make him laugh and I can make him happy and things are all working with him, then yeah, I can pretty much talk to anybody and be okay with it. <laughs> it, 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 it takes, um, I hope I say this the right way, mm. it takes a particular type of woman to be able to really um, consistently over time succeed in the retail automotive business, whether you're in the business, in the dealership world, or on the outside in a partnership type of relationship yeah. which is what you've you know you've been experiencing for for years now and from my perspective i mean a you have to have a lot of self-confidence right mm -hmm. you know you, you got to have a thick skin definitely you can't take yourself too seriously you got to be able to roll with some of that bullshit because you know you're going <laughs> to deal with you know you're going to get a lot of shit right like 100 you know you're going to get a lot of that like whoa yeah. and it's 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 I don't want to speak for you because I'm, I'm asking a question and saying this, but like, you got to find your way through that, and mm -hmm. only certain only certain ones can. No, that's that's hysterical. But yeah, you're <laughs> yes, you're 100 percent right. I mean, it's clear you have it. Well, thick skin, I think, is key too. I mean, really, because it's just uh, you never know what the day is going to be like, right? Right. And you really can't take it personally. It's all business, right? Um, I mean. Believe me, I've heard some stuff, I've seen some stuff, so, <laughs> and, I'm, and I'm still here. So, no, I am grateful that I do have a bit of a thick skin when it comes to that. Um, and you're right, and I really would love to see, I mean, there's some times where I am in a dealership and I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna go sell this car for you guys. What do you think? I'm like, I think I can do it, right? You just hear a conversation. You see, maybe the other guy, maybe he's a new guy or whatever. And I right. just sometimes I just want to do it and see if I can. But I really feel like women. I would love to see more women at the dealerships. Yeah, um, it, 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 it would. I tell it, them that well. all the time. Mm -hmm. I think so. I think it just brings a whole different clientele, whole different perspective. Um, we were. 
Uh, we were, my husband and I were doing a deal somewhere, I won't mention, but they did have a, a, a lady salesperson, and it was actually really nice. We are like, oh, it's kind of a cool change. You know, you wonder, um, I wonder as you're saying this, would, like if it was 50-50, let's say the car business is 50-50 men, women, right? Yeah. Would that, how much would that go in potentially changing the reputation for the business for most customers? I think it would have a positive effect, right? Absolutely. Because we all know that a lot of the bad reputation of the car business <laughs> is, is, is literally goes back at this point in time, probably 40, you know, 50 years. And it's just like you just had, and I love them, you had all these great freaking hardworking entrepreneurial, in some cases, total crazy lunatics, mm. you know, running these businesses. It was wide open all the time, right? It was a very, you know, I mean, listen, these guys worked hard, men and women, but it was a lot of men, mm -hmm. you know, but I think a lot of the, <laughs> the historical perspective on the business as a result of some bad behavior of some bad boys. <laughs> you, know, you just wonder if there was more women around that maybe people would think better about the business. Well, you know, cause like even, I mean, I was even raised to say, you know, if you're going to go buy a car, bring your dad. You know, it was always a thing. It was always like, well, you know. Um, which I, you know, I, whatever. I wish they would have just said, listen, this is how you negotiate. Here's how you do it. You mm -hmm. know, it's not a big deal. Um, but yeah, that is, I, I think it would be nice. I think it would make more women comfortable. I think it would open up another door of business. But mm -hmm. uh, I don't know. I mean, I guess at the end of the day, it's just sort of like who you're connecting with, right? I mean, and that's what I usually tell the sales the sales teams. I do a lot of training um, with another product that we have, Dealer Raider, where it's about their reputation and reviews and all right. those good things. So I do a lot of training with the, with the salespeople. And it's I love getting to know them all. Everybody is so unique. And I'm always just like, work on that. So whatever it is, right? There's always something about you that's gonna make people wanna work with you more than the next person. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, I guess men, women, whatever, as long as there's somebody out there that you can connect with, well, that's I, what it really matters. You know, I think, I think in any r transactional situation, whoever is the one, let's say, um, writing the check, <laughs> yeah. number one, they wanna mm. feel like they're being heard, right? Mm. You know, so regardless if it's man or woman, you know, whoever you're working with, you're hoping that that person is listening to what it is that you're saying is important to you and that that person says, not only do they understand that, but they acknowledge it and they're like, okay, yes, I'm here to go to work for you to help you accomplish that, right? 100%. Like that's such a huge part of sales. And so, and I do want to say there's so many successful women in the retail car business and there has been for years and I I, I see more of it right I mm -hmm. mean you flip to automotive news and you see a lot more mm. um, presence with women in all aspects of the automotive business which is great and and that should continue to be celebrated and we need to nurture that again that being said the fundamental piece of the of the transaction is, is are you working with somebody that's like you know are they there with you like like one of my favorite things to do and why, why I'm doing this like sitting face to face and having a conversation and looking at somebody in the eyes and just like this. Yes. Like being honed in on what you're talking about is very satisfying, right? Mm. I find it is. A hundred percent. I mean, yeah, absolutely, right? I, I don't know. I'm a I'm an in-person type of person anyway. Yeah. I'm not, I, I really wouldn't want to do business over the phone. Ugh. I wouldn't be good at it. Emails are the same. I mean, they're just terrible, right? I, I just feel like... I don't know. Yeah, I want to lock eyes. It's just that I agree. And even when I'm buying something, mm -hmm. I just want to see. Right. What's the body language, <laughs> right? Like, oh, what? Yeah. what? <laughs> I mean, we can't be the only ones that think that. Like, in my opinion, I just feel like the yeah, body language gives a lot away. Mm -hmm. And yeah, you just want to, you want to, look, it's the same one saying, so, such an old thing, but you want to, you know, buy from people you like. Right, I mean, that's just it. And then also the trust factor, and depending on what, I mean, obviously we're buying a cell phone. Doesn't matter who's gonna sell that to yeah, us. Yeah, yeah. Don't don't. I know. mean, I do like someone who actually knows what they're talking about. Right. <laughs> Which is tough now. I don't need to like you. Just tell me what it does. <laughs> oh, very tough. Right. That's yes. another thing, like hiring and all that. Well, we can't solve all the world's problems today. We right? can try. We can try. How much more time do we have? We got as much. <laughs> we have as we have as much or as little time as we'd like. Yeah. I, I'm curious because you mentioned that you have two teenage children, mm -hmm. right? So, what has it been like from your perspective as a woman with a career and kids? How do you? Yeah. How, how do how 
How does that work? How do you handle that? There, well, it's funny because um, I always think of this, like I did take a little hiatus, like maybe two years. Mm-hmm. My, um, my, 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 <laughs> So goofy, my we which what we did. My husband was doing just fine. We thought, why don't I just hang out with the kids and see how that goes, right? Mm-hmm. So that didn't go. That didn't go for anybody. <laughs> it was hysterical. Well, but um, now, remember, what didn't work with that? Well, I remember my son. So my son was like in tackle football, like eleven U, okay, and he's. I don't know. He was probably like twenty pounds at that. I mean, it was such a joke. But my husband was like, "Yeah, I think you should just stay home until the season's done, right?" So I'm like, "Okay." <laughs> I don't know what that was about. Um, but the kids. The long story short is, you know, my kids were around eleven and twelve, and they liked having me around, right? But mm-hmm. at the same time, they all they really know, knew was working mommy, and they ended up telling me that they're like, you know, we we liked it like that you're working. You seemed different, right? Um, so I thought that was interesting. And different in the sense that they saw you like happier or more fulfilled, is that I in that role? They saw something, right? They right. saw something that seemed to have more of a spark than when I was home mommy, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and I really don't know a whole lot different. I mean, I, I pretty much worked most of the time while I had them. It took as much time as I could in between. And uh, I do enjoy the balance. And I mean, the great thing when I finally transitioned from marketing into sales is because of a little more flexibility, right? Right. I don't have to be at a desk from, you know, 8.30 to 5 and being locked there because that would drive me crazy. Uh, But yeah, it's um, like even last night, right? I was getting a call from one of my coworkers at 7.30 at night. And I'm in the middle of making this crazy pasta dish, right? I had worked, I did a whole, you know, other stuff, and I'm now I'm like making the dinner, and I was like, ah. and I said, I'm doing it all, person. Like, why are you calling me this late? I'm doing it all still. And my husband's like, Yeah, baby, you're in the trenches. I'm like, All right, you just sit there on the couch. <laughs> <laughs> but I guess, I guess to say. Um, I don't know what I would do if I wasn't doing that. I really do enjoy working. I really do. Um, I, you know, it, it, and I love being a mom. Like I just, I like it all. Unfortunately, you know. No, that's why. Unfortunately, well, I don't know. I guess it would say something gives, but um, sure, it's it's hard work. My my wife and I have this agreement. Like I take one trip every year. You know, like two weeks, I can go. You know, something in that range. Yeah. And and, she, and and so she does the same. So she just went away to Mexico to like to a yoga, like a vegan yoga retreat kind of deal, right? Which I'm like, oh, I need to do that. That sounds really nice. That sounds amazing. And so I, and and right now I, I could do it. So I was like, you know, go. I'm gonna watch the kids. Now we have two kids. One is three and a half, and one is just over one. Oh so wow! Like, they're like babies, right? Yes. So I was home, <laughs> uh, it was 13 days with the kids, <laughs> bringing them here every day, you know, trying my best. And man, I gotta tell you, that is hard work. That's amazing you did that. It's a 14 hour day, basically from <laughs> 6 a.m. they're starting to get going, you're, and, and by eight o'clock when you, like, they're finally falling asleep, you're done. And anybody that thinks that like, you know, you know, that being a stay at home mom or being home with the kids, that that's somehow like, oh, that's that's not working. No. Holy shit. <laughs> no. And I remember times where I'm like, oh my God, I have to, I, get, I get to work today. Thank God. Yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, that's the, that's the real Oh, that when she got back the first day, like, like I like, like skid marks leaving the place. Like, and I couldn't <laughs> wait to get here just for one you day. Know you know what? I, oh, listen, my hat's off to you because one in three, I remember that. My were close you know close to back to back so um that's that's an active time <laughs> i you know and there was many times when i was like oh my god i i, I don't I'm, I'm gonna lose it like well, i was so close to losing it so many times but i look back on it now right and i'm like oh man that was as a parent for me that was one of the best experiences i could have had because it taught me so much a it gave me a sense of confidence like okay i can handle this all aspects of it right didn't enjoy every minute of it, but i can handle it you know, ran the deal, got it done, but it gives you a great amount of appreciation for what it's like for whoever is the person in your <laughs> life doing that. And and, and so, 
I, I can certainly see why you know um, mom Tracy and career Tracy is like uh, I think like, I like career Tracy better oh, <laughs> it's so funny but I will tell you the kids were um, honestly they're really great like I'm really really lucky they're really great kids but I mean we laugh at, at this point where sometimes they were in the car and I had to be on a conference call I'm like, you guys don't say a word, right? I mean, they were little, and they didn't. They were so good. They didn't say a word. And I would just always tell them, like, it's so good. That's great. <laughs> I mean, that helps too, right? Sure. Um, yeah. So, And now they're so cute because a lot of the time, sometimes I even like take them with me when I'm on the road. And they'll do, you know, there was a lot of online school last year, of course. So just bring their computer. They work. I drive around and go see customers. Um, with the kids in the Yeah. Wow. They like it. Uh-huh. They, they're they very interested in what I do. They, I don't know, they're just a Good learning experience for them then. Yeah, I've, yeah I've, I've brought them throughout my whole life. I try to bring them everywhere I go, especially with work. Like you said, you brought sure. them into the office, Absolutely, right? Absolutely, yeah. Um, they've loved that from a very long time. And I think it's been helpful because like they don't, they're not afraid to work, you know? <laughs> Which is really uh, tricky when kids are teenagers. So. Yeah. Yeah, you instilling that, that. Like, I know, I, I have a ways to go as well, too. Uh, not as well, but uh, as you said, but instilling that work ethic, mm-hmm. right? You know, I I don't know how, you know, I'm going to do that other than just bringing them here and explaining what we do. And, you and know, allow, do the allowance thing. It's goofy, but, and, and even if it's just like help with the dishes, just right. they get that money and they get that sense of like, okay, I got it. I got it. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> yeah, so um, that's great. And now they're going to be leaving soon, so I'll probably be losing my mind. So I'll probably be like a workaholic after that. So, But, yeah, they're both heading off to Tallahassee in August. And both. Yes, my daughter, that'll be her second year at FSU, and then my son's first year, he starts in the fall. Wow, it's like a family legacy, right? Uh, right. Did you go? You no. Did you, oh, no. And and we're, even worse, my husband's UM, so he's just like horrified. So he, you know, begrudgingly wears the T-shirt, and he's like, "Oh, are you kidding me." Uh, wow. So anyway, they they love it there. I don't know. They just love it there. So um, yeah. <laughs> so then, when that happens, like, what's you know what what is what is. You know, if you look at our business and what you do in it and stuff like, if you mm. look at the future, where do you where do you see this heading? Yeah, um, that's a good question. I mean, I have that question a lot, right? Mm-hmm. I ask myself that a lot, and I don't know. As long I, I love being somewhere where things are innovative, right? And I think with that happening and with the way the world is, things are not going to be very I mean being bored I don't think it's going to be an issue anytime soon right right right. so uh yeah do this as long as I can and as long as people want to have me show up at their doorstep then I'll be happy yeah I think I think you'll continue to be successful for a long time you know we we anybody watching like we've this is the first time that we've met we've spoken on the phone a couple times like one zoom call and I just remember feeling like I, there's a, I, I liked your energy, like I just liked your presence and energy. It was, it was, it was like, yeah, the, the, she knows what she's doing, and I, I felt very comfortable doing business with you quickly as a result of that. That I really appreciate that. No, oh, you're welcome. Um, I felt a vibe too, but I was like, these guys are super cool. <laughs> 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 I was like, wow, they're way more cool than anyone I've worked with in so long. They're showing uh, me their guitars and. The, Everything was, and obviously, listen, you guys are above and beyond. I mean, what you do. So um, the agency is amazing and, and all of that. And I appreciate working with you as well. Well, thank you. And uh, here's to the continuation of that, Tracy. Yes. It's been a great time sitting and talking with you. Thanks. Um, we will pick this up another time. As I shared some of my other ideas with you, I think some yeah, of that stuff will I'm happen. Yeah, I'm excited. So let's, let's uh Let's leave it at that for now. We'll take a temporary pause. And I want to thank you again, Tracy Petchy, for coming in and spending time with me on deck. I've never ended by saying on deck, on deck. Anyway, nevertheless, (laughs) thank you so much. Okay. Thanks so much, Chris. Cheers.